In my last video about an AI tool, this is the response that I got. And as you can see, people were completely blown away by what's possible. So I figured I'd put together another one that talks about all the different aspects of things that we have to deal with as content creators in ways that you can use AI to make it better. So first, let's talk about the transition that we went through when this video first started, where I held up the camera lens, we went through the camera lens, and then we ended up right here looking at a camera lens. That transition was done using a service called Kling. With Kling, they have different models that you can use for different things in terms of text to video and that sort of thing. However, this particular feature that I used allows you to have a start frame and have an end frame. And how this works is you go into your video editing software, you go to the point where you want the transition to start in your video and you screenshot that frame. Next, you go to the place where you want the transition to end and then you screenshot that frame. Once you have the screenshots you need, go back into Kling, select your start frame image, select your end frame image, and then give the prompt on what it is that you want the transition to look like. And then Kling is going to go ahead and make that transition for you. Now I know you might be thinking, hey Nick, with my type of content, there's no way that I have any use for this whatsoever. And that might be the case, but if you are somebody that's wanting to just provide something that's a little bit different for the sake of it just being interesting looking, you can do something like this where you can just transition objects into other other objects. You can transition piles of stuff into an object. Or if you're a woodworking channel or something like that, you can transition a whole big pile of wood into whatever the finished product is. The possibilities are really endless, but that particular tool is called Kling AI. Now let's talk about ways that you can use ChatGPT that you might not be thinking of. So when it comes to ChatGPT, in addition to being able to do textual stuff, it can work for you on your behalf. So what I mean by that is they have something called agent mode. So a way that you can use this is, a way that I have it set up anyway, is I have it going and looking at subreddits every single day that are based around YouTube content creators. And then it's giving me a report based on the posts that have the most upvotes and has the most engagement for that day. And even though I check into Reddit almost every day anyway, it's great having these reports for maybe a subreddit that I might not have checked into. So if you're wanting to stay on top of what's happening in your niche, going into ChatGPT, setting up agent mode and telling it to put together a report that's similar for you is a great way to stay on top of what's happening in your niche. Another thing that I think a lot of people are not really thinking about when it comes to ChatGPT is you can also use it to help you make graphics. And when it comes to graphics, I don't mean a whole entire thumbnail. What I mean is if you're putting a thumbnail together and you're like, hey, I need this like smeary smudge thing that I wanna put underneath the text, then you can just tell ChatGPT to make that and to make it a transparent .png file, and then it will do it. Now, every now and then, it will give you something that looks like it has the transparency, but it's not really transparent, and then you have to tell it again, hey, that's not transparent, make it transparent, and it will. But this is great for arrows if you need them, for any type of little element type graphics that can help you make whatever it is that you're doing better. For example, right here, I'm telling ChatGPT to make a red hand-drawn circle that I can use in a YouTube thumbnail. And as you can see, the output, it's not too bad. It might take a few prompts in order to get what you have pictured in your mind, but the trick to this is to make sure that you tell it that it needs to be a transparent .png file. So there is a process called EQ carving. What EQ carving is, is when you're making YouTube videos or really any videos where you have voice in them and you also have music, then sometimes there are frequencies in your voice and the music that end up competing with each other and it makes it hard to hear one or the other or it makes the whole mix sound a little bit muddy. You don't have to worry about that anymore because ChatGPT can actually help you with EQ carving. With this one, it's best to be using a software that allows you to adjust the EQ so that you can make these changes. However, all you have to do is once you're finished editing your video, render out your audio file, take the song that you're gonna use, load both of them into ChatGPT, and tell it that you're wanting to apply EQ carving to your voice in the music and to tell you exactly what frequencies to adjust. There are other ways to do this as well, but if you don't know how to use those softwares, this is a fantastic way to start to understand how those types of things work with your content to make your audio or the end result of your audio sound amazing. And one more thing with the EQ carving is when you're trying to do that, make sure that you tell ChatGPT the software that you're using as well and ask it which EQ is gonna be best in that software. And then it's gonna give you a lead on if your software even has it or not, or if it does, it's gonna tell you which EQ to use. Another thing you can do with ChatGPT 
ChatGPT is let's say you make a thumbnail and you're like, man, I just don't know if this thumbnail is any good or not. What you can do is you can take that thumbnail, you can drop it into ChatGPT, tell ChatGPT the title of your video and what your video is about, and then ask ChatGPT if there are any improvements that it thinks that you should make to your thumbnail. Now, keep in mind, it doesn't have all the rules built in and all of that about making thumbnails like my new creator app does. However, it's a great way to get started if you're not using my app. Now, we can't talk about thumbnails without talking about Nano Banana. So I'm not gonna go too deep into Nano Banana because I have a whole video about it. You can watch that at the top of the screen. But when it comes to Nano Banana, one of the amazing things about it is, let's say you make a thumbnail and your eyes are pointed in the wrong direction. You can have it adjust your eyes. You can have it change the color of your shirt. You can have it change your background. You can have it do pretty much whatever it is that you need it to do for your thumbnail in order to make your thumbnail look exactly how it is that you want. But that one is called Nano Banana. And you gotta watch my video on it. It's absolutely insane. Now let's talk about audio. So when it comes to audio, there are things that you can do as a content creator just to make your workload easier. So for example, there's a service called Eleven Labs. And with Eleven Labs, what you can do is you can train your own voice. And when you train your own voice, let's say that you are showing B-roll in a video, but you didn't say something in the right way. In that case, you can go in and you can just type in what you were saying into Eleven Labs, and then it's going to give you an audio file that sounds exactly like you, and you can put that in place of that thing that you said wrong, but you're saying it right instead. Unfortunately, the service doesn't move your mouth as a part of it, but it's a great way if you're making tutorial content or if you use B-roll and you talk under it in any parts of your videos to correct little errors that you might not have noticed during the recording process. For this, once you're inside of Eleven Labs, go to Voices over on the left-hand side. Once you see Voices, then you have a button over on the right that says Create or Clone a Voice. Once you go through the process of doing that, then when you click on My Voices the next time you're in Eleven Labs, then you're going to see your voice in this particular list. And then over on the right-hand side, in order to use it, you just click on the little Use Voice icon. Another really cool thing about having this once your voice is trained is that you can adjust the speed that you're speaking as well. So if you do need to speed it up or slow it down in order to match your cadence for that video, you can still do that really easily right here. But in order to use it, all you have to do is type in the thing that you wanna say and then hit generate speech. Now, one thing I found when using this is long blocks of text don't seem to work out that well. However, if you're like, hey, I just have this one line that I need to fix, it's fantastic for that. But like all of this stuff, it's gonna keep getting better and better and better. Now let's talk about consistency. So when it comes to staying consistent on YouTube, you do have some options there too. So the very first one that everybody loves and uses is Opus Clip. With Opus Clip, it uses AI to look at your long form content, cut it up into shorter form content, or take your live streams, like the really long content, and cut it into mid form videos. They also have a bunch of other tools like Opus Search and Agent Opus, where it makes videos completely for you on your behalf, which is amazing, by the way. But that particular tool can help you not only stay consistent, it can also help you publish content to additional platforms that you might be neglecting if you choose to, or it can just help you fill in the blanks with your content if you happen to miss an upload. The next thing that can help you stay consistent is called HeyGen. Now, I know a lot of people are gonna have mixed feelings about this one, but it's a reality, it's here, so I'm gonna share it with you just so you know about it. So when it comes to HeyGen, it allows you to create avatars of yourself, and they look absolutely incredible. For example, even though it's not perfect yet, this is my digital twin. Anyway, back to you, Real Nick. Before we get to Real Nick, this is my digital twin for a different setup. Now, back to you, Real Nick. So I wanted to stop the video here for a moment and just take a second to acknowledge how insane this is that we're here. So all of these tools that we're talking about during this video, everything is awesome and it's super helpful for us as creators. But the thing that blows my mind the most is the avatar stuff. So with those two examples that I just showed you, with both of those, I didn't spend hardly any time at all on the training data. I just uploaded old videos that I had on YouTube. I stripped out just the video and the audio, and then I just uploaded those, and I didn't follow any of the rules for training it. So if you do follow the rules, you can get a much better result than what I just showed you. But it absolutely blows my mind that we're here. This is all still just getting started and it's already that good. Imagine what this is gonna be like a year from now, two years from now, imagine what it's gonna be like. This is absolutely insane. And I just wanna take a moment, just acknowledge how blown my mind is right now because I was sitting here and I've been, you know, kind of immersed in all this stuff and making, you know, apps and tools and, uh, you know, using all this stuff. And I, 
like I just had that moment when I was watching this video or when I was editing this video to where I was like, oh my God, I, I, I just I just can't believe that that we can do this now. This is it blows my mind. Anyway, back to the video. Now, when it comes to the avatars, they're not perfect, but a lot of people are using avatars now to make vertical content so that they can pump out a lot more vertical content without them having to actually be on camera. But what comes out of HeyGen isn't always perfect, and because of that, you might have to mix it with the voice training that you do on Eleven Labs in order to make sure that the end result is as close to you as possible. Because for me, it can get what things look like for me, but it, it doesn't really nail the voice yet. How people are using HeyGen is they will make the avatar and and then they will use it to react to content or if they're showing screenshots or something like that, it'll be kind of small down in the corner, but they're using it as a way to make content with themselves without having to turn on any cameras or lights or turn on a microphone or any of that stuff which in my opinion is just absolutely incredible that it's even possible. And like I said, I know that there's gonna be mixed feelings about that particular one because there's some people that are anti-AI anyway, but when it comes to the avatars, I think it takes that whole thing up a notch in terms of like, if you're against it, you're gonna be really against that probably. But if you're open to it, then you can probably see the value in HeyGen and how you might be able to use it. Now, to see more tools and ways that you can use AI, click into this playlist right here. I got a bunch of stuff in there for you. And to stay up to date with all this stuff, make sure you subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.